Welcome to PLZ Soccer. I'm delighted to say our one-to-one guest this week is Richard Foster, uh, currently playing with Partick Thistle at the ripe old age of 35. Uh, I've got to ask you first of all, Richard, how are you handling lockdown? Well, I'm, I'm not currently playing. <laughs> that's, that's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one's been much harder than the first one. Um, I think to go back into playing and then for it to be stopped, um, and then you're sitting watching at the weekends and you're watching all the other games and stuff, which I have enjoyed, I must say, I have enjoyed that as well. But it's um, I'd much rather be out there on the pitch than, than watching yeah. in the house. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of people can see the end in sight and that's maybe that dangling of the carrot is is giving us all hope. Um, I mean, I presume at some point, maybe what, April, May, you'll think I'm going to get a jag? Well, I don't know. I'm I'm in this category that's basically we'll just get to you when we get to you. Um, you're you're in your thirties. You don't have any health issues. Um, you're pretty low risk. So you guys just crack on and and keep living in a box, and then we'll get to you when we're finished everybody else. Yeah, uh, is there a sense of frustration, especially because some people would suggest maybe you're looking at the twilight of your career? Has that been more frustrating for you? Yeah, I think so, because I'm looking at it now in, in the first lockdown in terms of not training. So not training for, I think it was, I don't even know, nine months, six months maybe, um, was the longest that I've been in my, in 20 years that I haven't trained, haven't done any football training. Um, so I found that tough, and then we got to go back, which was great, and, but it took my body a little while to, to kind of to catch up. Um, and then now since we've stopped again, same thing's happening. It's it's um I'm starting to get aches and pains that had gone away. Um and I, I fear that when I go back to training, if we eventually go back, I fear that it's gonna be the same. I'm gonna you know, it's gonna take me a while to get going, but I don't really have that time because obviously the season's shortened anyway, the games will come pretty fast and just my body's just not able to deal with it as well as, as possibly the younger ones. But even even the younger players, I think, have seen a lot more muscle injuries this season, I think. Um, that, well, there certainly seems to be. I don't know the stats exactly, but there seems to be a, a lot more players getting injured um, just because of that long layoff period. And I'm at the point now where I need to train. I'm not even too concerned about playing games. I just need to train um, up until the end of the season and then probably try and train throughout the course of what was normally a pre-season or a, an off-season because I don't really need the off-season. What I need now is, is to kind of keep going, the continuity of training. Yeah. What would you say if I said to you that potentially they could ditch the season for League One and League Two? It is still on the cards. <sighs> well, it's just disappointing. Um, and I know, I know it's still on the cards and I, I hear there's... There's also a rumour that would maybe come back and there would be no promotion and, and no relegation, which is basically like having eight friendlies until the end of the season or however many games. Um, so it's not ideal because, again, it's it's one of those where 35 now, where do I go from here? And I know that's that's me being completely selfish, but I need you know at this stage of my career, who's going to take a 35-year-old that's hardly played in the last year? Um, so it could it could potentially be retirement for 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 me and, and all the players that kind of are in the same boat as me. Yeah, I understand the selfish part of it because that's the way everybody has to think at the moment. Um, but you know, even as a collective, Partick Thistle, like Hearts, have had a real kick in the teeth over the last twelve months. Yeah, I think you know it's. Um, it's been well documented. I think that they just the way things have been done. I think they could have been done a lot better. I think there was um there was a lot of scope. I think for reconstructing the leagues, um and and having teams in place that could fulfil fixtures, that could fulfil testing, that could fulfil everything. Which part of this was certainly one of those um full at like a full time club. Um, so I think that was an argument. I think the way the league ended was obviously. A bit unfair in terms of having the game, the extra game uh, they weren't allowed to play. So it's just, I think it's just one of those things that we're looking at going. Well, this is just another kick, um, and you know, with all respect, I've only I've only known this for for less than a season. You know, the, the park Thistle players that were there before me, and certainly the fans, they must be looking going. Basically, no one in charge cares about teams out with the, the top league. 
Yeah, and with that in mind, I mean, they're, they're, I don't know how they're going to organise this if they if they don't finish the League One and League Two. There's surely a difficulty over the Scottish Cup. I mean, they're even suggesting they'll play the Scottish Cup into the the start of next season just to try and get it finished the way they did last season. Yeah, but no one wants that. You know, the Scottish Cup final is the, the kind of almost the spectacle of Scottish football. It's, it's the game that you know you want to play in as a player. It's it's the last game of the season normally. It's just you know it's 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 just up there in a the pedestal. And I think to, to have that that tie in November, December, whenever, it's just it's just not the same. It's just you know yes, teams will still be grateful that they get the opportunity to play there and they can win the Scottish Cup, which is great. But you're also looking at it going. How many of the players that are at clubs now are going to leave over the course of the summer or retire, could be in my case, and then their team goes on then to win, get into the semi-finals, the finals of the Scottish Cup? You'd be absolutely devastated if, if you just, you know, that this year's Scottish Cup was played next year so that you, you missed it in what could be your final year. It was just, it doesn't sit very well with me, to be honest. Yeah, and with that in mind, who do you, who do you, seek counsel on that decision because it is a tough decision for many a player do you do you look to your partner do you look to your family uh, you know someone that can give you that little bit of advice because it is getting to the point i sense from that you're thinking well i might not be kicking a ball again yeah it's um you know i was i was kind of here before um with, with the last lockdown and even when i went back um i wasn't convinced that my body could cope to be honest um, just because I was getting so many aches and pains, and you know, kind of limping home from training, and and I'm always, I've always been one who gives everything I've got, and when I can't physically do that, it it gets me down. So I tend to just, you know, I, I speak to my wife, and she's pretty good, and you know, she doesn't allow me to wallow, which is probably important because I would, I would wallow quite a lot, I think. Um, <laughs> so she, she kind of, she doesn't allow me to do that, but she still offers me kind of help and guidance and dealing with it, and and she has to you know that i am capable physically i still am capable i still when i'm when i'm fit and when i was fit in the season i felt good i still felt quick and strong and, and fit so i know i can get there it's just going to take a little bit more time which it did um, and a little bit more adjustment and, and to be honest the manager at, um, at thistle he's been great as well and and kind of manages what i do in training and and you know says to me you know, if you're fit for the Saturday and you're available to go on the Saturday, then in terms of distance covered during the week, he's not too concerned. So, so it's it's been good for me being at Thistle with with the manager, but also the counsel I would probably seek the most is definitely my wife because, like I say, she um, she probably gives me the most honest view. You know, sometimes you don't want to hear it, um, but sometimes <laughs> it's what you, most of the time it's what you need. Yeah, in a strange sort of way, because Amy's in the entertainment game, do you think because it's, sometimes I think it, it, it it's a game like football where, you know, you've got hundreds of people who want to be your mate, but you only really have about five or six close mates. Um, and sometimes, you know, the, the ups and downs that she's had, you know, she's self-motivated at times to think, okay, I've had a hit record, everybody wants to be my pal. Okay, the, the next album's maybe not as great. But you know, where are these pals that were apparently there? Is that the is that the edge that she gives you? She got that mentality. I, I don't I don't think it's so much the, the the people wanting to be your friend and stuff. I think it's more the it's more the the judgment you receive from everyone. You know, like you said there, you're kind of you're in the public eye, and everyone has an opinion on what you do. Um, and you know, you have, for Amy, she can have the album and, and our latest album she believes is our best our best album to date but does she get the same exposure that she used to maybe not i don't know why so she has to deal with the ups and downs of that because she's essentially putting her work out there for everyone to see and if she doesn't get the the, the exposure that she she that in my opinion that she deserves then it's hard for her as well similarly for me you're playing football and people are commenting on how you're playing or you're you're maybe not getting the recognition you feel you deserve. So because both industries have that kind of focus, the outside focus on what you do, and everybody everybody feels that they are able to give to pass judgment and make comment, um the two the two industries do, you know, parallel quite well a lot of the times. And so it's good to have someone who knows because Amy knows that if you go on Twitter and you see a hundred good comments, 
but you see one bad one, you focus on the bad one because it's the same for her. Um, and, and that's just the way you, your mind works, that you can see you, people say, can say nice things about you, which is really nice to hear and see, but that the one that always sticks with you is the negative one. And like I say, for, we both experienced that same thing. So it's, it's, it's something that we've got in common and that we can chat about and, and help each other kind of get past that. Yeah, it's a strange thing. You know what I'm like? I'm, uh, my job is not to be sincere with you. You know that, don't you? <laughs> since, since of course. We've been, we've been in contact with each other on more than a few occasions. But I have, uh, you know, thousands upon thousands of records and CDs in uh, a music room. I've always, always had music. In lockdown, I've only bought two CDs, um, which is rare for me because I usually buy hundreds of them. And the only only two I've bought are Bruce Springsteen, Letter to You, and Your Wife's CD, which I agree with you. I think it's actually the best of all her releases. Um, I mean, The Hudson is just absolutely magnificent. I mean, that is her best work. But, you know, I can't work out, you know, why some people might like Richard Foster one day and why people might not, you know, like Amy MacDonald the next. It's mental. See, I can understand why people won't like me, <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but I don't. I don't understand why. Why? Um, I mean, it's not even that they don't like Amy. I think it's just it's, no. it's, the music industry has changed a lot. I think since Amy started, and um, you know, streaming and all that kind of stuff. So physical albums are no one sells as many physical albums as they did before, um, and that was quite. And that's been an adjustment for Amy. But yeah, it's, it is. You know. I suppose what is it you know one man's treasure is another man's garbage or whatever the saying is you know it's it, some people yeah. some people like you some people don't but the, the problem that we have is the ones that like you tell you they like you and the ones that don't like you they tell you even more <laughs> <laughs> and it brings me to a point which is quite unsavory i mean it, 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 we, we always talk about the fact that we're all open to criticism. It's how you deal with it. Lockdown's been extremely difficult for a number of people. One of the things that um, you touched on there was the fact that 100 people might like you on social media, but there's one who can be abusive. A lot of people are calling for change. I mean, whether it's Amy in the music business or you in the football business, I think social media as a platform has to be regulated soon and tighter restrictions and people have to be held accountable. I don't know how you, how you feel if you've got a strong feeling on it. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think there has to be, you know, these nameless, faceless accounts, they, they, you should have to sign up with an, a form of identification, um, whether it's a, a bank card, whether it's a driving license, just so, you know, that, that account is, that account, sorry, is registered to you so therefore, anything you say, you're held accountable for because, you know, yes, I've received it um, in a football sense. Amy's received it in a musical sense. But I was listening to the radio this morning and, you know, uh, children that have disabilities, people that have disabilities are receiving abuse online. You know, um, there's also a lot of recently, especially down in, more so down in England, but a lot of racist abuse being, being dished out online. And, and these people are just... They're able to get away with it because these accounts, it could be anyone. You can just sign up with any name. You don't need to put in any of your details and, and you're free to just just to abuse people online. Now, I have never understood, I've never understood the mentality that I'm going to go out of my way to find someone on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, whatever it is, just to tell them how awful they are or, how, or what I think of them. Um, as if as if my opinion actually really matters. But the problem you've got is you can say the say something to a person. Like you could you could send ten abusive messages to me and one day I'll just ignore them. I'll be in a good place. Um I won't care. I'll just let them the water off a duck's back. But then there'll be a day where you're maybe feeling you know, you're feeling a bit low. I'm thinking about retirement, I'm thinking about all the negative things. And those those messages can get through and, and and kind of hit you pretty, you know, where it hurts. And this this mentality that people can just say things is a, it's a throwaway comment, but it can ruin your entire day or your week. Um, it just it absolutely baffles me. I have no idea why anyone would do it. I'm a very much believer in that if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. 
you know, yes, we, we all sit at home, and, and, and Amy and I are no different. You sit at home and you'll you'll make jokes, and you'll, you know, if if someone's got a funny haircut or they're wearing, you know, wearing clothes you think are, are a bit daft, and you and you laugh and you joke with each other. But I would never go online to find those people to 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 say, oh, your hair's crap, or you know, yeah. I don't like the jacket you're wearing. You know, recently I've been on TV and getting and getting slaughtered for a jumper. It's like, guys, it's just. Just stop. Just what is the point in your comment, if not just to be horrible? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a great point uh, you make. Um, uh, although I might as well um, apologise to you profusely because the gear that you were wearing with Amy at the PFA Awards was <laughs> was absolutely <laughs> mental, to say the least. I have the photographs, but I, I was trying to be light-hearted in what is unbelievable. No, there's, one... there's there's a point. You, you, yeah, you laugh at it, you go, oh, that, that's mental. But you don't search me on social media to put up a photo to tag me to say, oh, what the hell's he wearing? You know, it's it's a laugh yeah. and a joke between us at the time, and it's it's fine. Whereas it's just that, and that's what I don't understand that that mentality that yeah, I'm going to just sit behind my keyboard and I'm going to say what I want. Um, but yeah, I mean, and that I may I well, connected, but... yeah, that may well be the. <laughs> That may well be that may well be the difference, and I think this is the thing about society that needs it is that there needs to be a definition, an understanding, an education on what is fun between people who are friends, what is yeah. crossing the line between hurting and being abusive, and as we say, and as I've mentioned on countless occasions to people, if Marcus Rashford, who has done nothing but good in society over the last year, is getting abuse, the game's up for all of us. I think if if you look at anything that he has done and you can see any kind of negative, then there's something inherently wrong with you, I think. I think, you know, he, he's taken his own time, he's went out of his own way, he's campaigned, he's raised money. He's, and, and what is he raising money for? He's raising money to give children food. You know, it, it's not as if he's he's raising, he's doing a crowdfunder to, to, to pay for a holiday or buy a new car. He's raising money and, and awareness and, and going out of his way and using his time and his profile to, to feed hungry children. Now, if you look at that in any other way than, a, and than in a positive light and an exceptional light, then there is something, like I say, there's something inherently wrong with you. I mean, there are things, there are things that are, pro, you know, there are certain things that are just abhorrent and should, and in no context, work, you know, racism, homophobia, these kind of things, then they're never funny and they're never a joke and they're always really, really spiteful. But, like you say, you laughing at what I'm wearing and, and saying it to me and we have a laugh and a joke about it, you know, that, that's fine, that's okay. But, you know, like, like you said, to look at someone like Marcus Rashford and, and find any kind of negative of what he's done, then you're right, then the, the world has gone crazy. Let's look to some football because if I, my memory serves me correct, Richard, you played in the last Rangers team to win the Premier League title. I did. I was um, I was lucky enough to make enough appearances in the league, um, just barely, um, to receive a medal. Um, but I had a very a very enjoyable time there. Um, it was a, a real eye opener for me in terms of the level of consistency and ability and, and work rate that these guys put in. Um, and to be honest, I'm kind of seeing that now with the, the the Rangers team at the moment. They they seem to be back to what Rangers were the last time they won the league. Yeah, I mean Steven Gerrard, huge part to play in that. He's one of those guys. Would you love to have played under him? Yeah, I think if you look at the players he's got, um, and I think probably every single one of the players have progressed and have got better. Um, I think we, you know. James Tavernier is probably the perfect example. Now, he was a good player beforehand. We all know that. Um, great quality going forward. But on occasion, would defensively be in the wrong position or would make mistakes. But we don't see that now. We don't We don't see it with the... And I mean, it wasn't a regular thing, but we just don't see it. He's, he's solid in defence. He's part of a, an exceptional defensive unit. Um, and then we've seen this season what he brings going forward as well. Um, and I think so. If you look at him, I think if you look at Goldson beside him, he's progressed. The midfielders, I mean, with with Gerard, I think it's is it Michael Beale and Gary McAllister. 
if you're a midfielder and you don't improve, <laughs> then there's something wrong with those three <laughs> teaching you. You know, but I think yeah. if, if you look at it, I think if you look at the midfielders, they have all. I mean, Ryan Jack um, is now, you know, at a level that is is way beyond where he was. You've got Stephen Davis there, who's, you know, Stephen Davis, to be fair to him, he has always been at that exceptional level. But Arebo's come forward, Arfield's come forward. So if you look across the whole squad, um, they've all improved. And I think as a player, that's the kind of manager you want to work under, the, the manager that will make you better. Yeah, um, I, I, I think a lot of uh, Rangers fans will look and think, you know, when he wins the league, stay on another year, take it on to another level again. Are you of the opinion that the calibre of Steven Gerrard in our game, you would like to see him stay? Um, I think so. I think he, he, he's done a lot. He's he obviously he's done a lot for Rangers, but he's, he's, his profile has done a lot for Scottish football. Um, and, 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 and it's just another, it's another person, it's another manager who has been in Scotland and understand, now understands the game and understands that it's actually not as bad as a lot of people would have you believe. Um, so for, for him for him to be up here with his profile um, and being enjoying being here and being the manager here um, is, is good for the game. Um, it's obviously, like I say, it's good for Rangers as well. But I mean, I suppose that I've heard Roy Keane speak about it down in England, that the, the true test of, of champions is can you win the league and then can you go and win it again? So, you know, it, it looks like Rangers are going to go on to win the league this year. But if he stays, can they then repeat it and do it again? And that's that's when you start to get a team into the, the record books as, as one of the great teams, teams that can do it over a course of a number of seasons. Yeah, a couple of quick points before we go. Um, St. Johnston, Livingston, it's a League Cup final. It's one of your old teams in there. Um, give us your thoughts. Um, I, I would really like St. Johnston to win. Um, I've, I've obviously still got got friends there, and it's it's a really nice club. Um, and I think that at the moment they're of the two, they're playing the better football. Um, I think they've been excellent recently. Um, I've seen them a few times this season, and and they were kind of slow to get started, um, and they lacked a bit of goals. But now they've got that. You know, I think is it Melamed at the top end of the pitch, Chris Kane scoring goals, Wotherspoon's providing assists. I think they're they're looking really good. They're, the formation they play, everyone knows it, um, and they play a lot of good football. But then on the flip side, you've got Livingston, who have just on the back of that incredible run they were on, um, and they can also play. I think no one gives them credit for, for, for the football they play sometimes. I think they just think they're all kind of blood and thunder and kick the ball up the pitch and tackle and head it, but they can actually get the ball down and pass it and play. But I think the recent game between the two, oh, I think it was two set plays, they, they conceded, but there wasn't much in the game. So... I'm excited that it's going to be a good final. It's it's refreshing for it not to be the old firm. Um, I think for neutral fans, it's probably a good thing to see the smaller clubs. And for, for each of them to, to have the opportunity to go and win a, a trophy, um, it's it's pretty magical. And the two points to finish, where was the most enjoyable period of your career? Um, that's difficult because... I've been so many clubs. <laughs> no, um, I think <laughs> you know, I can I can look back I can look back on each of the teams I've been at. Probably apart from Bristol City, um, I didn't. You know that was not a good time for me personally. It wasn't a good time for me on the pitch. Um, so I d I didn't have a lot of enjoyment there. Um, Aberdeen, obviously, I came through there. Had really had a lot of success when, when Jimmy Calderwood came in. Um, go to Rangers and, and win the league. I mean, it'd be easy to say Rangers the first time because we won the league and I play in the Champions League. So probably on paper, that's that's the best. But I think, um, ironically enough, probably St. Johnston, when you know when I was there, and I actually had a really good, and still do have a really good relationship with Tommy. And, um, and I think I probably played some of the best football of my career at St. Johnston. Um, obviously, the way it ended was... It was a bit unfortunate, um, but that was probably the culmination of a few different things. But yeah, probably in terms of enjoying playing in, in the, the group that I was with, in terms of the dressing room, I think probably St. Johnson would be my happiest. Uh, and the last part, when it eventually comes, what next for you? What are you going to do? What would you like to do? Um, well, I've, I've, got my, I've, I've got my A licence, so, um, so I think I would like to go into coaching and do a bit and and just see if see if I'm able to do it, and um, see if I'm, I'm I can put on good enough sessions. If if, if groups of players can listen and, and take in information, and uh, from me, uh, 
you know, whether I can deliver it in the proper way and, and whether I can have success in coaching. Um, I, I do think I want to try that at some point. But I do, I also like doing the, the media side of, of things. I like watching games and, and talking about football because it's really the only thing I know. <laughs> so I don't, there's not, not a long list of things. I mean, I've, I've done a psychology degree, um, but that by no means qualifies me to talk about psychology. So, um, yeah, football is, is the one thing I know. It's It's been a passion of mine, obviously, for, for over 20 years. So I think watching games and, and talking about it and analysing it is something I do really enjoy as well. So I don't know, maybe an amalgamation of the two. Um, I think long term, probably more the, the coaching side, if I'm any good at that, um, would, would probably be the, the more desired option. Well, of the two, Richard, I think you've got a lot to offer in both camps there. Um, uh, whatever you do, if you become a manager, uh, for God's sake, don't take Amy as your assistant, by the way. You'll not get a word in. It'll be really hard on the training ground when she tells you you're not doing it right. Um, but, uh, I, al I always enjoy talking to you. I love the banter. I love the, the chat as well. And a lot of you know good comments and great sense comes out of you. Um, whatever you decide to do, if I don't see you before that big call, um, Best of luck to you. I'll see you out of lockdown. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you.